<laughs> well, we're all gathered here today to mark the loss of our dear friend, the International Space Station. So, um, I think let's start at the beginning. And the countdown reaches zero. I guess that's way back here, when humans first figured out how to put things into orbit, sparking a race between the US and the Soviet Union to get things and then people into space. That's one small step for man. In 1971, the USSR successfully launched the first space station. And NASA wasn't far behind with its own home away from home. Then there was Russia's Mir station, which stayed in orbit from 1986 to 2001. But in the 90s, the two space superpowers decided to end the space race and work together on something even bigger. The first component of the International Space Station in orbit. And in 1998, Russia launched the first part of the International Space Station. Over the years, it kept growing and more countries got involved. Now it's the biggest object we've ever put in space. In fact, if you look up at the right time, you can see it with the naked eye as it whizzes by at 28,000 kilometres an hour. But friends, the ISS wasn't just there to look good. It was also a space laboratory that helped us learn more about our world. In fact, discoveries made up here that get used on Earth are known as spin-offs. And there have been quite a few of them, from air and water recycling systems to new ways of growing food. And looking at the Earth from up here has given us a unique perspective on things like weather, climate change and volcanic activity. It also had a pretty big effect on the 244 people who've been lucky enough to visit. But nothing lasts forever. Especially when you stick it up in a big, cold, radioactive void. And now, we come to the end. Yep, after a couple of decades in space, the ISS is, well, wearing out. And maintaining it costs about $4 billion a year. So NASA is planning to retire the station. And when I say retire, I mean send it plummeting into the ocean in a fiery ball. <laughs> I know this might sound dramatic, but experts say it's the best option. Otherwise, if you leave it up there, it becomes space junk, which is already a massive problem. And they don't want it falling back to Earth in an uncontrolled way. Now, friends, the question is, without the ISS, what does the future hold for humans in space? Well, the ISS isn't the only station up there. China's Tiangong is growing, and it's already had crews on board. And NASA's given grants to three private companies to build their own space stations. And they could use the ISS to help them get there. It'll also be used to help us get ready for our next big space adventure, getting people to Mars. So, let's not see this as the end, but a beginning as we look forward to another eight years of amazing science from our giant friend in the sky. Wait, what? We've got another eight more years? Yeah, they're not crashing until 2031. What? Well, then why are you having a funeral now? You made us all so sad. <laughs> <laughs>